Uh, good morning, everyone. So uh, it, it's a very good order of presentation. So mine is, uh, my presentation is really picking on well on where uh, Keith finished uh, is. Uh, but I'm going to start with uh, two observations. Uh, the first one uh, is, uh, I'm here alone today, uh, but it's a team effort, so my colleagues' names are on the slides. Uh, and the second one is uh, when I was invited to uh, take part of a plenary session, I was asked to present uh, stuff that I don't present all the time. I think these were all the explicit words that were used. So what I'm presenting today is what we would call in the world of university, so preliminary, preliminary findings. Uh, meaning, uh, if you see it published in a few years, it might be slightly different from what you see today. Uh, but we are fairly confident about the results. So Keith talked to you about the, the, the cross-time trajectories of attitudes uh, among uh, Canadians towards immigration and multicultural, multiculturalism. So uh, my presentation is more about uh, understanding uh, the views of Canadians, so if I, if, as you will see from one specific uh, perspective. So uh, when we ask the questions about what makes Canadians more positive or uh, negative towards uh, ethnocultural diversity and immigration, scholars typically, typically focus on issues such as uh, economic and cultural insecurity, uh, xenophobia, blunt racism, or uh, predicting more positive attitudes towards the importance of having quality contact with people of different origins. Uh, but there's another line of research, however, uh, that is far less uh, known and, and not as numerous, that focuses on the role of national attachments or national identity. So we know from these few studies that actually there is a relationship between how strongly one feels about its nations and its views towards ethnocultural diversity. There is, however, mixed evidence about the, dire the direction of that relationship. And here I'm going to refer to uh, the very interesting uh, study published uh, by uh, Jack Saturn and his colleagues in 2012 that compare Canada and the United States. And in their studies, they actually showed that the more strongly you felt uh, as an American about the United States, the more negative you were about immigration and multiculturalism. Well, the opposite was observed in Canada. So the more positive you were about Canada, the more proud you were about your Canadian identity, the more positive you were about ethnocultural diversity and multiculturalism. So that's interesting. Uh, but uh, I come from Quebec, and in Quebec we know that there's a world beyond national attachments. We actually don't even use the word national attachment. For us, that would mean attachment to Quebec, for most of us. Uh, but we know that political communities are fragmented. And Canada is a very good example. And when I say fragmented, I don't mean it in a negative way. So there are different orders or levels of political communities. In Canada, we have the pan-Canadian federal political community, but we also have provincial ones that are highly salient in people's lives, including increasingly in uh, the realm of uh, immigration and ethnocultural diversity. <clears throat> we also know, especially coming from Quebec, that being attached to Canada or being attached to the provinces don't necessarily go together. So you can be attached to one, May, and not be attached to the other one. And while well, in the previous version of the slides, uh, I had a, a, you know, a picture of how that varies across provinces, and that reality is not just one of Quebec. Of course, in Quebec, it's very different, uh, but the correlation of being attached to your province and being attached to Canada uh, is not a perfect one, far from it. Yet, <clears throat> despite this reality of fragmented political communities in Canada, but also across the world, we know very little about, <clears throat> sorry about that, <clears throat> about the relationship between your attachment to this subnational unit and uh, your views towards ethnocultural diversity. So that's the question that I do address today, is what is the relationship between those national and subnational attachments and people's views towards uh, ethnocultural diversity across the Canadian provinces? So uh, despite, uh, contrary to what the title says, I've decided to focus on all Canadian provinces, or well, many of them, or some of them. So, if we begin uh, by some expectations regarding attachment to Canada, I mean, uh, you probably all know that Canada went through a profound transformation of it, the definition of its national identity since the 1960s, while slowly beginning with the point system, then the multiculturalism policy, the charter, and, and then the 1988 Multiculturalism Act. So there's been this transition towards a more civic and inclusive uh, definition of Canadian identity, and as a general rule, uh, the idea of what it means to be Canadian uh, has been accepted across all provinces, as uh, Keith showed, and it was very interesting to see also the rise of the importance of multiculturalism as being one of the contribution of, of Canada. So, uh, you know, if we go from this, and we go from also the, the results by Citron and all, well, pretty much what we should expect, as my colleagues before uh, me have observed, is that 
Well, pretty much, regardless of the province where you live, the more attached you are to Canada, the more strongly you feel about Canada, the more positive we expect you to be towards ethnocultural diversity. By the way, it's interesting because to, 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 our, to my knowledge, to our knowledge, their study has never been uh, replicated. So it'd be interesting for us and for you, I suppose, to see what the results are. Uh, but the reality is also more complex. We have attachment to the province. And as a general rule as well, we know that the idea of multiculturalism as a policy, as an ideology, or as a model has been uh, widely accepted across Canadian provinces. And they would say, well, maybe with the exception of Quebec. Uh, the situation in Quebec is a bit more complicated. Uh, we've been in a situation for many decades now of what scholars call competitive nation building, where federal and provincial governments compete for the loyalty and of their citizens, uh, but also a situation where there's been an explicit refusal to adhere to the policy of multiculturalism in Quebec. Not necessarily as people might believe, because Quebecers object to ethnocultural diversity, uh, but also some broader, bigger political game about the place of Quebec and French-speaking people within the Federation. But still, we have, and instead actually propose a still uh, as to be formalized model of uh, what we call interculturalism which people debate whether or not it is fundamentally different from multiculturalism. But all this to say that some, there is some sort of uncertainty about how the relationship might play out in Quebec. So as a general rule for most provinces, except Quebec, we would also expect that the more attached you are to your province, the more you would be positive towards ethnocultural diversity. I just said, in Quebec, it's a bit more ambivalent. So what I've presented to you so far could suggest that the relationship might be negative or there might be no relationship. But at the same time, if you think about the trajectory of Quebec since the 1960s uh, and what we call the l'idéologie de la survivance, uh, you know, Quebec has transformed itself as well as Canada and has moved towards a much more inclusive and flexible definition of its uh, national identity. So uh, we're going to verify those relationships and how we're going to do that. So we conducted in the winter 2014 uh, a a survey that is called the Provincial Diversity Project that was aimed to actually study dynamics of ethnocultural diversity or views towards ethnocultural diversity across Canadian provinces. So we surveyed 6,400 Canadians across the country, but the survey was stratified by province. That means, and no offense to people in Ontario, but that means that out of 6,400, not 45% of them come from Ontario, uh, but only 1,000. So we had 1,000 in Ontario, 1,000 in Quebec, uh, Alberta, and British Columbia, and most other provinces were around 500 uh, respondents. That allowed us to look more carefully at what's happening in each of those provinces. So in that survey, we asked many things, but one of the things we asked were how strongly do you, are you attached to Canada and how strongly you attached to your province using a feeling term reader scale from uh, 0 to 10. We also ask a lot of questions about ethnocultural diversity, and we're going to test today the relationship between uh, Canadian and uh, provincial attachments following three dimensions. The first one is attitudes towards immigration. It's an index that captures whether people want more or fewer immigrants and how they assess the impact of immigration on the culture of Canada and or their province, and also whether it has a positive impact on the economy. Views towards multiculturalism. Also an index has uh, people assessing the positive or negative impact in their view of multiculturalism on different spheres of life or dimensions. And finally, uh, restrictions on minority religious symbols. And well, I recognize that this one might surprise you uh, here uh, for mostly a non-Quebec audience. Uh, but I just want to say that we emphasize that, yes, because of what was happening in Quebec, uh, but also because if it is not much of an issue outside of Quebec in Canada, the issue of religious symbols for, uh, in the public sphere has been an issue in most of the Western European countries. And in that perspective, uh, it's almost the anglo yeah, the Anglo-democracies that is an exception, and uh, not just Quebec, but that's a bigger question. Anyway, so we decided to look at three different dimensions of ethnocultural diversity. So what we do next is we conduct a multivariate analysis that I'm going to present just some summary predicted probabilities here. Uh, I don't have the full tables. I didn't think it was appropriate for that kind of 15-minute presentation. Uh, and so we, the point is to analyze and isolate the relationship between how one feels about uh, the province and Canada and how they feels about ethnocultural diversity. <clears throat> so the first slide uh, focuses on attachment to Canada. The next three slides will take one dimension after the other, focusing on the provinces. So um, 
let's start with how Attachment to Canada relates to views towards immigration. And we are very pleased to observe uh, two things. The first one is that our findings tend to replicate those of Saiton et al. before us, which is uh, whether it is in Canada, uh, whether it is in, uh, we focus here on four provinces, but when you read Ontario, uh, it means pretty much all the other provinces. I should have changed that. But wherever you are in Canada, the more strongly you feel about uh, Canada, uh, the more positive you are towards immigration. If we look at multiculturalism, we also observe the same thing in most provinces except Saskatchewan, where there's, there's a, a, actually no relation, positive relationship at all. And finally, if you look at uh, restrictions on religious uh, minority symbols in the public spheres or for public servants, then you see a negative relationship. I mean, the stronger you feel about Canada, the less supportive you are about such restrictions. And again, uh, no relationship uh, in, in Saskatchewan. So as a general rule, like I say, our findings very much strongly support or are in line with those by Saturn and all, which is th th this idea that Canadian identity and Canadian patriotism is associated with more positive views towards ethnocultural diversity. And this, if you're asking, is controlling for all sorts of socioeconomic background uh, and attachment to your province. So my time is running out quickly. So attachment to the province and now attitudes towards immigration. Well, I start by focusing on Ontario and Quebec. And as you see here, controlling for your attachment to Canada, if you feel more strongly about your province and you live in Ontario and in Quebec, it actually has no impact whatsoever on how you feel about immigration. Meaning here, and you're all thinking about it, I'm sure, if I'm strongly attached to Quebec and I'm not attached to Quebec at all, it doesn't make me more or less positive about immigration or negative. However, if you focus on, on Alberta and Saskatchewan, and I focus on those not because I want to pick on them, but because they are the ones who stand out. All the other provinces are like Ontario and Quebec. And in this case is here, and the relationship is statistically significant, the more strongly you feel about Alberta, Saskatchewan, of course, when you live there, uh, then uh, the more negative you are towards immigration. If we move to multiculturalism now, Ontario and Quebec, well, Quebec, maybe contrary to what some have expected, is again, no relationship between how you feel about Quebec and how you feel about multiculturalism. Interestingly, however, uh, in Ontario, the more strongly you feel about Ontario, and that adds on even more strongly to your attachment to, uh, to your feelings towards multiculturalism. Well, I guess you see where this is going. Uh, so Alberta and, and Saskatchewan, uh, there is a slight negative relationship. Actually, in, in Saskatchewan, the relationship is, is even it appears ne negative, it is not statistically significant. Uh, but, but it is in Alberta. So the more strongly you feel about Alberta, and the more negative you are. And this is, once again, controlling for your attachment to Canada. And then finally, uh, restrictions to minority religious symbols. And here, the, the findings will probably not uh, surprise anyone. Uh, but so, well, in Ontario, no relationship, but of course the emphasis is on the blue line, Quebec. In Quebec, uh, there is this very special relationship when it comes to religion and there was religious symbols. So the more strongly you feel about Quebec and the more you favor such kind of restriction, and this is the strongest relationship that we have observed of all of those that we investigated. And uh, absolutely nothing happening in Saskatchewan and Alberta. So really the issue of uh, religious symbols, is, as other studies and political dynamics shows, is primarily a, a Quebec issue that we may discuss later on if you want to. So uh, concluding remark uh, before they shut off the microphone. Um, so, uh, so attachment to Canada, as others before us, but just a few have shown, is important to understand people's attitudes towards ethnocultural diversity. But so are provincial attachments. Uh, quite interestingly then, however, the direction and the salience of those provincial attachments really varies across provinces. So beyond the pan-Canadian model of multiculturalism and the story that we are told about ethnocultural diversity in Canada, there are parallel stories, parallel narratives that are sustained in provinces. So in all sorts of different spheres of life, but including ethnocultural diversity and immigration, provinces remain still today provincial, uh, meaningful provincial communities with their own narratives on uh, the topic, and we should not lose sight of that. Thank you. <laughs>